thanks for selecting me to to do the book. It was uh, it was so much fun to do. Um, because oh, it was, you knocked it out of the park. You did a great job. I thought. I really, I really enjoyed it. I really did. Cold here in New Mexico right now. I don't know why I thought you were on the East Coast. Uh, it's originally where I'm from. I grew up in New York, um, so I've been everywhere. <laughs> but I'm originally a New York uh, cat, and I moved to New Mexico in 2015 with my wife Sarah. Well, you should be used to the cold, then, shouldn't you? I know I get that a lot. Uh, <laughs> I moved here to get away from the cold, though. I hate the cold. I never like thought nice of New Mexico. I never thought of New Mexico as getting cold. I thought it was one of those states like Arizona. Oh wow. Yeah, so I mean, in the desert it does get cold, mostly in the night. Um, it gets wicked cold at night, but it's the high desert, so there's a lot of wind. Um, it's pretty cold. A lot of good snowboarding out here, though. If you're into snowboarding, and whereabouts? Skiing. Whereabouts in New Mexico are you? Uh, I'm in Albuquerque right now, so it's the main city. It's a pretty big city out here. Um, it's northern New Mexico, so it's a little bit closer to Colorado. So it's just at the southern edge of the Rocky Mountains. I think the closest I've been then is I've been to Denver. So Denver? Oh, okay. The layover <laughs> in Denver? No, it was a radio convention, actually. Oh, in, uh... Denver's pretty cool. I like Denver. Yeah, I, uh, I made the mistake of performing stand-up comedy in Denver, and it went horribly wrong. It was oh, just... the, yeah. yeah, that that's unfortunate <laughs> it, it's you know the um very dry humor is that is that the case i think i know it was, a lot of europeans have a very dry sense of humor it, yeah i think it might have yeah. been that um yeah, yeah there was definitely a, a cultural difference that just was not translating um yeah. i i opened with I, i'll tell you what i did i opened with this joke right so i'm at a radio convention and i was doing breakfast radio at the time and it was mostly um, breakfast shows or morning shows, as you would call them, from all over America were all in this one hotel. And so I said, I said, oh, the reason why I'm, I'm in town is I'm at this convention. And, you know, do you know that, you know, some of the top morning shows in the United States are all in that hotel right now? I said, you know, so one strategically placed explosive device could change the face of morning radio in this country forever. <laughs> <laughs> and it got nothing and this was yeah i think this was uh it was 2008 no it was earlier yeah. than that it was about 2006 so it was a little bit too close to, to you know and i yeah. of course yeah. then i started backpedaling and going oh you know i could feel it and i said okay look you've got to understand I, I i grew up in the 70s in the uk when you know the ira were blowing up pubs and everything so i grew up with terrorism so it's still new to you but don't worry you'll get just as blase about it as i am and that and that got worse and, you doubled down and yeah like that. Oh, yeah that, uh, see that that's the route i would have went too i would have doubled down but <laughs> <laughs> and then i ended up because we, we celebrate guy fawkes night here which is where we let off fireworks and light bonfires on the anniversary of a bloke trying to blow up the houses of parliament so i mentioned that and it just got it there was just there was no coming back from that it was just <laughs> awful i remember i'd I'd, great. I'd gone with um a couple of friends of mine gene and julie who do used to do a, a morning show in dallas and there was another guy there who was a producer. I'd only just met him from New York. I said, you know, I'm going to do the stand-up. I've got this stand-up gig. Do you want to come down and see it? So they came with me. And I came off the stage. And I said to Gene, I said, how do you think it went? And he said to me, run. And we ran out the front door and hailed a cab. And it was that bad. It was awful. Wow. So that was Denver. But you're not yeah. in Denver. You're in Albuquerque. Now, isn't Albuquerque where they filmed uh, Breaking Bad? Breaking Bad and uh, Better Call Saul as well, yeah. So yeah, although I I have my gripes with Breaking Bad. I loved Breaking Bad, um, but when you watch Breaking Bad, it does a very poor job of actually showing the city. Like there's a lot of beautiful parts of the city, a lot of beautiful mountains in the areas and stuff, and it doesn't really it doesn't really show much. Of, I mean, it, it it shows some things in the backgrounds here and there, but it could do a much better job. I don't know. It, it it, I've the, always had gripes with it because of that. It shows the desert as a pretty sinister place, Breaking Bad. <laughs> it, <laughs> it can be. I've heard stories. Um, I've met some crazy, squirrely folks out here, but it's not It's not that bad. It's not. <laughs> a little bit of that's just some Hollywood. 
it's not yeah i me and my wife go out in the desert all the time we're, we're big into outdoorsy stuff so we go out hiking and stuff and uh yeah i've never come across any bodies or anything like that yeah we're still looking for buried treasure but it, it's not as bad as breaking bad would have you think it is <laughs> all right well before we get on to the book let's talk about you then so you grew up in new york whereabouts in new york so I'm from upstate New York. I'm from just outside of Albany, the capital. Um, technically, it's a, a small town called Oneana, Um, but it's just outside of Albany. I tell people it's Albany because people know people know where Albany is. But um, and my wife is from Queens, which is actually in the city. One of the um, boroughs. Yeah. Yep, yeah, one of the boroughs in the city. Um, I spent a lot of time in the city, but I'm not really from the city. Um, yeah, from upstate New York. And I've moved around all my life. My dad was in the military, so um, I don't know. We just moved around a lot. Spent some time in the South for a while. That wasn't really my cup of tea. Hey, really? Um, Whereabouts in the South? Uh, Alabama. Uh, I spent some time in Panama City, Florida as well. Really nice people, great people, nicest people you could ever meet. But it's just really – everything's very slow there. Everything's – everyone speaks very slowly. Everyone acts very slowly. If you need something done, it'll be – two months down the road before you even think about starting to do it so it's just not really my my bag i like it out here in the west though um why did you end up in, in albuquerque then what, what took uh, you there? we had a couple lists of, we had a list of places that we liked um new mexico is one of them taxes are good um we were trying to get out of new york i, I don't want to get too much into politics but the pol the political culture in new york just wasn't good at the time when we left and um albuquerque was in New Mexico, rather, is pretty much a free state. You know, you can do whatever you want. Um, people don't really bother you. People don't mess with you. People don't tell you what to, you should think or should do. Um, so it's just a great place to be, the Southwest in general. Uh, we almost ended up in Colorado because I like Colorado a lot, but a little bit too much snow, a little bit too much like New York with the snow. So we went to New Mexico, and here we are. You said, my, the, you said the taxes the are good, so, you know, for, from, a, from a Brit really who's good. not, you know, I lived in Australia for a while, which had states and federal, and there was a difference, but the taxation, by and large, I think was all the same. How, how does it differ then, state to state, and particularly for New Mexico? Um, so it's it's just different rates in, in different categories because everything is taxed in the U.S. So, so we're talking like sales home. tax here? Sales tax, property tax, um, those are those are two big ones. Uh, income tax, obviously, is another big one. Um, states like Texas and Florida, and I think Alaska, they don't have any in income tax at all, which is pretty sweet. Um, but New Mexico is just a nice little like in the middle spot. It's a very very poor state. You know, it doesn't have very much money to work with, but at the same time, it doesn't need much money to work with because there's not much out here. It's a lot of desert, so yeah. it's pretty cool. But well, with like New York, I mean, you you need that tax money because there's just so much that needs to be, you know, dealt with all the time. So yeah, it's just different, just a lot lower key, but still a good pulse, still a good energy out here. Um, people are cool, people are rad. So I love it. You're, I, I've been here for five years now, six years, I guess, going on now. So how yeah. do you spend most of your day? Is it writing? Uh, I did, um, up until 2020, then things got a little weird. Did they ever? Um, <laughs> did they ever? Yeah. That, that, I'll look back on that statement. Um, I used to, yeah, it was really nice. When I first moved out here, I'd, I'd wake up and I'd make a cup of coffee and I'd write until about one or two o'clock and then I'd get into other endeavors. Um, but now I haven't, I have honestly haven't written anything since last November. So, um, yeah, things are still a little bit squirrely, but I'm trying to get back into the flow of things here soon. What's, hopefully, what's stopping you writing? Um, well, my wife's working from home, and that's a total blessing. It's really awesome, but it's also a distraction. Yeah, like, there's, I bet. there's really just yeah, there's no way I can actually get any any writing done with her around. Not to sound mean or anything. It's it's really a good thing, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So growing up in upstate New York, then when did you first? start writing and, and being creative uh, i started writing when i was in high school um i'd write short stories and these these crazy little things just as a, as a teenager you know teenagers are there's a young men they're uh, a lot of energy needs to be re redirected to something so um 
I don't know, I was always good at, with writing, so I'd write short stories and stuff, and I remember um, I had a really good English teacher, and it, it, it's on the tip of my tongue what her name was, and it's insulting that I can't remember it, but uh, I it'll remember come at the back time... To you. It'll come back to you after we disconnect, straight away. Yeah, oh, I know it well. It'll come to me tonight when I lay down to go to bed, yeah. Um, but she had, read, she had read one of the poems I had written, I remember, and she had gotten it published in this, this book of poetry, um, for me and that just kind of like gave me a little bit of confidence to say hey i could probably do this more later in life so um from there i went on doing a lot of freelance stuff for people across europe a lot of like editing stuff um a lot of like uh technical boring boring things mostly but like the just line editing things like that um uh, giving people uh advice on the flow of things um how things look, how things come off, how things resonate with people. And um, I don't know. And then I just started publishing my own stuff and people really digged it. So I kept doing that. And now I'm still kind of doing that. And what <laughs> kind really of stuff were you reading ever. at the time? What was inspiring you? Oh, wow. Um, I like a lot of science fiction. I like Neil Gaiman a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I remember Stardust was one that I liked a lot when I was a kid. Um, hmm. I don't know. I read a lot of weird stuff too. I, I remember reading a lot of that old fantasy stuff that no one really likes. It's like, it's, <laughs> oh man, what were those called? There are so many like things that like, they just have forgettable names because it's all generic stuff with like dragons and elves and stuff. It's mostly yeah. copies of Tolkien's work, you know, yeah, yeah. but um, I read a lot of that when I was a kid, just because it was accessible. You go down to the library and be there because nobody else was reading it. <laughs> So were you a book nerd then, do you reckon? Um, I don't think so. I mean, probably, yeah, I guess so. Spe in in terms of an American, yeah, I was definitely a book nerd because Americans don't really read. At least my generation doesn't really read. Um, I don't know why. But so, yeah, probably in terms of Western culture, book nerd. But I don't really think of myself as a book nerd. I actually, today, I read a lot of uh, technical stuff. I'll read up, like, on how to fix a guitar um, and, like, how maybe a guitar's neck is shaped, you know, and I'll spend days reading up on that, even though I'll never use that information. But I'll read up on it because I think it's interesting, you know. Yeah, you're and a I musician, then? So uh, I, I have played music all my life. I currently have a Strat. I do play guitar. Um but yeah, I, I jump around. I like playing different instruments. I'll get bored with one, then move on to another and come back to one. And I started off playing bass when I was a kid. I learned yeah. how to get real funky with it. And ever since then, I've liked, I've liked the Strat. I've liked that, that funk sound. I'm always chasing that tone. Do you think there's a connection between music and being a musician and being a writer? Because there's certain overlaps with structure and, and the creative process. Sure, yeah. I think so. Um, and... I think that it's actually two halves of the brain, right? I think one half is a little bit more uh, technical while the other is a little bit more creative. So I would imagine that could resonate across different, you know, yeah. platforms, be it music, writing, yeah. or whatever. And, and you do I've need... always said I could, I could do anything if I, you know, not to sound cliche, put your mind to it, you can do anything. But I've always strongly felt that way. Um, like if I set out to do something, I can do it. Um, and I, I think that's just, yeah, I think it's a good mixture of maybe having the right things going on, the left brain, the right brain. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was explained to me the difference between the left brain and right brain, and I forget which way round they are, but one of them is Spock and one of them is Kirk. And then... That's yeah, that's a great <laughs> analogy. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So you talk about you know putting things together and starting out with Child of Satan. Where did you start? Because um, for me, this is a dark book. This it's a very dark book. <laughs> it is it? Goodness it is me! It goes it goes to some very dark places. Yeah. What and from well, and from the from the very beginning, I think it starts in hell. Starts, um, yeah, yeah. Got to so, start in hell. But yeah. so, where, where, where do you, as a, as a writer, when you come to the project, what's the inspiration, and then how do you start to put it all together? Well, um, so. Let me go back a little bit further then. So when I started writing Child of Satan, I was working on a book of short stories. And that was originally one of the lineup. And it very quickly became, hey, this is going to be a little bit longer than a short story, but it's not going to be quite its own book. I've always wanted to write a novella that falls in between the two. So we'll table it and we'll work on it there. 
you know, as a novella. So I continue working on the short stories, finish the short stories, then revisit the novella. Um, now, all the short stories that I was working on are very dark because that was the theme of the book because it's a book of short, twisted, dark stories. Yeah. And um, with Child of Satan, it being biblical, um, I don't know, I've, since I've always been a little bit into fantasy and stuff, I, I like taking uh, the biblical aspect of things and just pushing it to the extreme. You know, the book of Revelations is is not, I don't want to say fun, but it is though, right? It's a little bit more it's, exciting. It's, I mean, the whole the whole of the Old Testament is pretty dark when you actually, you know, a lot get, of it get is. down. Yeah, uh, but dark. but Revelations, the the four horsemen of the apocalypse and the abyss, and all, just yeah. yeah, and and that it's I can just, I can see that totally now in Child of Satan. Yeah, right. Yeah, mm. so I, I I take a little bit of that and kind of try to fuse it in, but I, I try to keep the tone very. Um, medieval-ish kind of and and uh like dungeons and dragons and ish you know that that old school feeling where hey this isn't so much our reality as it is it's, it's still a fantasy world but it's taking the bible and, and the biblical things and kind of throwing it in there and just making it i don't know a little extreme a little fun it's, it's a fun little read um, people people have received that book pretty well it is very dark <laughs> for it's sure great though um, but and you, you you describe it as a fantasy world. Do you believe there's a real hell? Uh, I do. I do believe there is a hell. I think it's a little more complex. I think it's beyond probably what you know we could understand. Um, what's really going on? I've I do spend a lot of time reading up on stuff like that, um, but I don't. Yeah, I couldn't really give you a good explanation of what hell is really like. Um, maybe 2020, maybe last year. I guess we can look back at that. Maybe that, maybe that's it. I don't know. <laughs> Let's talk about the characters then, because there are two, basically there's two main characters in the book. The first one is, is Victor. Where does he come from? Where does Victor come from? Um, so. Like, is he an uh, old boss or something? I, you know, I don't know. No, no, <laughs> nothing like that. I, I did just create him, just make him up. I mean, he has bits of, like with any author's, characters he has bits of me in him in that um his uh in particular his sympathy his his empathy sense of empathy for like animals and stuff that yeah you know that's a little quirk of me that i'd throw in there to give him a little bit of humanity yeah you know otherwise he'd be um, too he'd be too far wouldn't he and that was the that was the thing with him he although you know it, it is extreme you know it, the word entrails appears and, you know, I don't want to give too much of it away because it is good fun to discover it yourself. But you, you do, you do actually, I mean, is he a victim? There is, there's, there is, you, you feel, you actually feel for the guy, but right. bizarre. And you feel weird as you read it thinking, well, this guy's, oh, I don't know. And then you just, you get, you get closer to him. It was really nicely done. That, that balance right. must've been tricky to get. Uh, so that's one of the things that I think I actually excel in and not to sound, you know, full of myself or anything like that. I, I think I excel in, in kind of making a nice balance where you feel something you want to feel for the bad guy. You want to feel for the good guy. The good guy has highs. The good guy has lows. The bad guy has highs. You know, it's, it's all it's all not black and white. There's not really a good guy. There's not really a bad guy. It's all kind of mingled together and we all have good parts, bad parts, what have you. Um, so, yeah, with, with that. I mean, you pick up the book, you know, right off the bat, hey, the main character is the son of Satan, right? So, so you know, kind of what you're getting into, but at the same time, um, you know, it kind of begs the question, what does it mean to be defined by your parents, you know? And this has nothing to do with me. I love my parents. This isn't, an, an, it isn't me sit, crying out saying that I hate my parents or anything like that. But what does it mean to, to be defined by your parents, you know, throughout the whole book, his, his destiny, what he's supposed to do, you know, it's, it's defined by who he is. It's he's, he's propelled further edged on by his sister, you know, it, it, it's, it's all defined by family and what his, his destiny is supposed to be. So, yeah. <laughs> now, now his sister, I didn't feel for, I mean, obviously I love the character and, and I, and I'm pretty sure that you're supposed to, you suppose it, I, you know, I, I, I didn't like her. Not, not that I didn't like the, but I did, I'm not trying to say I didn't like the book. Or I didn't like the way it was. Written. I loved the way it was written, and I loved that she was there and whatever. But I just didn't feel the same thing. For do you have a sister? I do have a sister. How is that relationship? <laughs> has she read the book? 
<laughs> um, it's not bad. I, yeah, I love my sister. We don't talk much. She lives in Alabama right now. She has kids and she's doing her own thing. Um, but yeah, no, my sister's great. She's younger than me. Um, yeah, she's. <laughs> Um, right, so there's there's no like sibling rivalry that's coming to the fore there because I thought that when I was no. reading I thought is this guy got an issue here he's taking it out through the pages of the book I certainly have more of a rivalry with my brother um, yeah just a uh, you know a fun little rivalry we like playing Dungeons and Dragons and stuff so he's very creative as well um, he's not confident enough to put his work into writing but he should because he's he's really good but i think that's probably what more where my rivalry lies is between me and my brother <laughs> you mentioned it, uh, it brings out the book um are we defined by our parents is there a moral to the story uh there is a moral to the story for sure um and it's kind of defined by the ending so i don't don't, don't give it away should, spoiler yeah. alert no let's not yeah, let's not spoil it alert. let's not spoil it <laughs> but the, definitely some purpose and meaning to to it all and you're an award-winning writer you've had a couple of your previous books turned into audio books uh, this is the first time you and i had worked together in fact this is the first time we've actually spoken in real life yeah. even though it's yeah. you know this way um, what was the experience for you like on working on this one as an as an audio book then? Uh, so, I mean, ACX has been great to work on as a platform. It, the setup is really great. You know, it's, you, you throw out for auditions, um, you get back some some fun things, and uh, you know, you go from there. And it's it's really easy. The the process of writing a book isn't too bad. It, it goes very quickly. The process of editing a book is really what leeches the fun of it you know you spend forever just editing and editing and editing it's not fun the process of creating an audiobook it being so hands-off me not having to do anything is wonderful <laughs> it is awesome <laughs> <laughs> any any little issue that comes up you know it's not really i don't really have to fix it right then and there because i'm not recording it you know so it's really nice nice not to have all the problems myself <laughs> yeah you know? i don't think we we had any problems did we i think at the very beginning there no. was in in the beginning part there was a part that was written backwards because it's mm -hmm. you know devil speak and whatever yeah and uh and you asked me to slow it down which we managed to do i i did it because i actually recorded the words you've written it backwards so i had to mm -hmm. transfer it to see what it read like forwards so i could read it forwards and then i could edit it and turn it round so that it played <laughs> backwards and yeah. then and then you got me to slow it down and then it really did sound demonic goodness yeah. me yeah so that was a good call on your part to uh to get it to, yeah, to slow I, it down I, I do think that was a really nice touch for sure i definitely appreciate you doing that oh that <laughs> it was good fun satan only speaks i think once or twice yeah and so in the book you know i i remember listening to like old rocks rock music and stuff classic rock had that old trope where you know you play i think it was an acdc uh, record backwards or something like that and it would sound like the you know something like that and uh so when i was writing it i just thought well if it would be too much if he had so much dialogue and it was all written backwards it would be confusing but if it's only one or two pieces you know readers or, or in this case listeners i think might take the time to try to figure out what exactly he said because it's only one or two things it's a really nice touch I, i'm really glad you did that oh it's great. <laughs> so thanks it, again was, for that. it was great fun thanks for selecting me to to do the book it was uh, it was so much fun to do um, because oh, it was, you knocked it out of the park. You did a great job, I thought. I really, I really enjoyed it. I really did. In fact, if someone is listening to this or what, sorry, watching this, and uh, you'd like to get, uh, you'd like to get the book for free, uh, you can do it by uh, signing up for Audible's. Um, you sign up for for a month of Audible, and uh, if you go to the the link down there, I'll have the link for you. You can see it. And, and you'll get the book. You'll be able to download the book for free, and then you'll um, you'll be uh, all signed up for Audible. And it doesn't cost anything to join. You get thirty days uh, for free. So do that. Check it out, and then uh, and check. You got nothing to lose then. So it's right. It's right down there. That's where it is. It's I'll, down I'll, there. I'll, I'll put it in there. And uh, what's next then, Kevin? Oh, what's next? So I want to get back to writing. Um, obviously, uh, I need to get rid of my wife first. I know that sounds terrible, but you don't you don't mean <laughs> permanently, obviously, in case she's watching this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure she is. Um, so 
do need to get back to writing. I'd like to write a, a second follow-up book of short stories because when I was writing the first, um, I tabled a lot of them and it wasn't so much because they weren't good enough, but rather they didn't fit the, uh, the form, certain formulas I was going with when writing these short stories. So I tabled a lot of them and I'd like to revisit a lot of those and maybe finish them up, put them in another book of shorts. I'd like to put on another novella too, because that was a really fun thing to put out. It's, so, because it's so much shorter than a, you know, a novel, um, the editing phase is, is a breeze. Uh, the, ev the everything is just so much easier because it's so much shorter, and it's fun. I've always excelled at short stories anyway, so I think the novella it might be a, a nice little niche for me to actually slide into a little bit further in life. I hope so. I hope you get back to writing real soon because I'd love to read some more, even if I'm not producing it for audio books. I'd like to I'd like to read them as books because they are so much. Uh, so because they're so dark and uh, yeah. it, it is good how do we find out more about you uh so you can go to my website it's klayman.com um, and i'll put a link pretty to basic that. i'll put a link to Thanks. that as well so uh, um i'm really bad about using social media i don't use social media too much i use instagram a lot because i like photos um so you could check that out too i guess that, that's instagram.com slash k layman too i think <laughs> so that should be pretty easy um yeah those are probably the best two platforms to keep track of me now at this current point in time all right well until uh, until we talk again thank you very much the book is called child of satan it's dark but it's fun it's if you like that kind of thing you'll really get into it and it's uh, it really was great to to perform the book and i'm so glad you liked what i did with it and oh, you did uh, great job continued success. Cheers, Kevin. Thank you, Graham. Thanks talking to you. Or thanks for having me.